Hi, in this video, I'll show you how you can get a ChatGPT-like interface like this running locally on your machine for free. This is Vincent Codes Finance, a channel about coding for finance research. If that's something that interests you, consider subscribing so that you get notified of my future videos. In this video, I'll show you how you can use Olama and OpenWebUI to create your own ChatGPT replacement that runs on your own machine. In my case, I've got a MacBook Pro M3 processor with 64 gigs of RAM. That's more than plenty. You don't need as much to actually be able to run that, uh, but the more RAM and the most powerful GPU you'll have, the better. In order to install our ChatGPT replacement, we'll first install Olama and then open web UIs. Olama is a small program that runs in the background and lets you manage and make available large language models that are open source, such as Llama 2 from Meta or Mistral. In order to install Olama, all you have to do is add to their website and click download. If you're on Mac, you can also install it with Homebrew by using brew install Olama. You can look at the different models that are available on uh, Olama by clicking on models and then looking at the different models. They have some featured there. You can look at the most popular. Most popular one is Llama 2. There's Mistral as well, and then there's a few variations as well. Most models, like Llama 2, will have a few different versions available. So if we go here in tags, we'll see that. So the default variant that Llama 2 makes available is the chat variant, which is optimized for chatting. This is what we want today. But they also have a variant that's optimized for text. And then they also have variants depending on the size that you want. So 7B or 70B or 13B, for the number of parameters that they are in the model, the more parameters, so 7 billion to 70 billion. The more parameter, the more memory the model will require, but also the more powerful the model will be. If we go down, even for the 7 billion parameter chat model, there are a few variants, Q40, Q41, Q5, and, and so forth. So what are these? These are models that have different quantization. The idea being that a typical LLM model will have parameters that are stored in floating point values with 32 bit size. So quantization, what uh, these uh, variation do is that they've reduced the number of bits, the number of uh, memory allowed for each of these parameters, which means that you need less memory to use the same number of parameters, but you're losing some precision. So there are some trade offs there. What I recommend is that you play a bit with them and see which one works best for you. Besides the most popular models, you also have a few models that might be interesting depending on your use case. So for example, they do have uncensored models. So here you've got Llama 2 uncensored, which is a variation of the model fine-tuned to remove the safeguards that uh, Llama 2 has. So this model will basically answer whatever you asking it. There won't be a reply where the model tells you, well, I can't reply to this. This is uh, too dangerous or too bad. I won't do it. So these are available to you if uh, sometimes you need them for research purposes where a typical LLM will be blocked. These offer you the full power of these LLMs. Olama is actually a command line application, so you have to go to the terminal to uh, interact with it directly. Depending on the way you've installed Olama, you might have to start the service manually or set it so that it starts automatically. If, for example, you've installed it with Homebrew on Mac, it will be set up as a service for you automatically, so it will run in the background all the time. If we go in the terminal, you can call Olama by just typing Olama, it will give you the available comments. So here we've got a few different comments. If you want to start the service, you do Olama serve. In, in my case, uh, because I've installed with Homebrew, the service is running, it's already there. So I'm getting an error that it, the, the port that it's trying to serve is already in use because Olama is already running. Um, then you can also list the models that you've got installed at 
the current time, if you just installed it, you won't have anything. So these are the models that I have uh, installed on my uh, computer. If you want to install a model, so for example, if I want to install uh, Llama 2, I would just do Llama pull Llama 2. My case, it was really fast because I've already added installed. It's just double check that I had the latest version, but because that's the case, it's it's all good. Uh, in your case, it might take a bit more time because it has to download the full model. The most powerful model that uh, they have at this time for chat is called Mixtrol. So for that, you would do Olama pull Mixtrol. Uh, with no S, so Mixtrol. Again, it's going to be fast for me because I've already I have it installed, but it's actually about 30 gigabytes in terms of download size for this one. If you just want to chat with the model, you can just do it in the terminal with Olama directly. So I can do, for example, Olama run Llama 2. We'll start the model and make it available to chat with me. So here I'm just prompted, I can send it a message. We can, for example, see whether it knows about Olama. So what is Olama? So clearly, uh, no, it didn't understand my question or it doesn't know about Olama. So that's it, it's, it's working. But it's not necessarily the kind of interface we want to interact uh, on a, with on a day-to-day -day basis. So I can just quit this chat by doing slash buy. It will stop it. Uh, okay, so now we've got Olama working on our computer, but we don't want to interact with it. So this is what we call the backend. So it's the service that's providing the large language model to our computer. But now we want to install a front end, so the application that will kind of serve as our UI, as our user interface to interact with these large language uh, models. So for that, we'll use Open Web UI. It is a ChatGPT replacement that is open source. So it does offer a lot of the features that ChatGPT has. So it lets you keep track of your chats, store model files, uh, prompts, and so forth. So we'll see what they are, but first we'll have to install it. This is the uh, somewhat tricky part uh, of this video because in order to install Open Web UI, you'll actually need Docker. If you don't know what Docker is, Docker is a container uh, software. So what containers are, are there little virtual machines that run on your machines and Docker is the software that helps you manage these containers and run them on your machine. It can be a bit confusing the first time, but it's actually probably the safest way to run softwares like this because uh, these containers, they're self-contained, so they're isolated from the rest of your machines. Um, the reason why Open Web UI has to run in a container, it's because it's basically a web server, right? So it is a ChatGPT replacement. It is a web server running on your machine that will interact with Olama. So in order to do that, you have to run that server and the container has everything built in to that. It is actually a web server and it supports multi-user uh, setup. So if you want, you could also set up uh, Open Web UI to serve as a, an enterprise chat GPT replacement where, or for a small team where you'd have a computer where that uh, runs and that serves multiple users. This is not what we're doing here. Here we're installing it on our own machine so that it serves only us, but it, this is uh, what this software can do. So in order to install Docker, if you go on docker.com, you'll have to go Docker desktop and then download uh, for Mac, Apple chip. Um, be aware of the license here. If you are at a large company, uh, this might be binding for you because for me, it's a just small personal project. It's fine, uh, but keep that in mind. You can also install Docker uh, with homebrew on Mac. So I've put the instructions in the video descriptions if you want to do it that way. Once you've got Docker set up, we can go back to Open Web UI and look at the instructions here. They will give you the quick start 
with Docker. And what I'll do here is I'll just copy the instructions here for if Olama is on your computer, use this command. So this is what I'll copy here. And now I'll go back in my terminal and paste this command and type enter. And now I've got a kind of little message with a big, large uh, number that tells me that it is uh, running now uh, on my computer. So I can go into Docker desktop. If I go on the Docker desktop dashboard, I can see that it is running here. And that's all there is to it. By default, it will uh, set up Open Web UI on the port 3000. So in order to connect to it, I would just do localhost 3000, uh, localhost column 3000. Um, and then it will ask me to uh, sign in uh, or sign up. If it's your first time that you launch Open Web UI on your computer, you'll have to sign up. The first user to sign up will be admin. And after that, uh, you'll be able to log in with your account that's created. Don't worry, it is local to your machine. So uh, the account that you create, it's on your machine. We're not sending your information anywhere. And now I've got a full featured chat GPT replacement. I'll have the list of my chats here. Um, when I first want to run a chat, all I have to do is pick the model. For example, here I could do Llama 2. I could set it as my default. And then I can ask a simple questions like, what are New Way West standard errors? The first time I ask a question, it might take a few seconds for the model to load. It depends on the size of the model. Uh, but overall, it tends to be faster than ChatGPT. At least that's my, my experience on my machine. The speed will uh, obviously depend on your machine. It tends to be uh, faster than ChatGPT. Uh, so it is pretty cool. Now, another cool thing that you can do with uh, this, if you start a new chat, so I have my model here, I can actually add a second model. So for example, here I could have mixtural latest and then repeat my query. Now mixtural is a quite large model. The first time I will query it, it will take a few seconds to load. Um, and I will also see it if I bring up my activity monitor, the memory usage for my computer. I see that the memory use is uh, jumping quite high, but it is working and it is providing me uh, an answer. So whether it's the answer or not that I want, well, I actually have two answers because I've added two models. So I can actually compare. This is the answer I got from Llama 2. And this is the answer I've got from Mixtral. So that's not something that's possible with ChatGPT, but here in this case, you are working, this is working on your own machine. You can actually add multiple models and compare the results that you get from multiple different models. If we explore the other options that you've got here on the left and sidebar, what we've got, we've got model files here. What are model files? Well, they're pretty much the equivalent of GPTs for um, chat GPT. So they are kind of built in uh, sets of prompts or instructions to a model uh, that you can use to uh, serve a specific purpose. So you can build your own if you want, you can create your own models with the, the different kind of instructions here, the prompt and the different types, or you can also discover the ones that are have been uh, designed by the Open Web UI community. So if you just scroll down here, you'll see different uh, model files here that are featured. You can also click and see the most popular ones. Then you've got prompts. So prompts are kind of simpler version of model files. They're just kind of prompts that you've saved for future use. And you can also look at the open web UI community to see prompts that have been shared by other users. And finally, you've got documents here. These documents will be saved in a RAG fashion. So retrieval augmented generation uh, type of uh, availability. 
which means that it doesn't quite work as uh, it works with chat GPT. These won't be able to access your uh, full document when you query it. So uh, for example, here I've tried with a research paper. I wanted the, the uh, chat to summarize that paper. It's not able to do that because it's not able to see the whole um, the whole document. Basically, this is more for reference documents. So it's going to be able to search for snippets in your document that are related to your search and summarize those uh, those parts. But it won't be able to kind of get a full overview of a document. These are the main features of Open Web UI. You can explore more if you click on your username and go to settings. Then you've got a few more options there where you can set the team, your system prompts. You've got advanced parameters. You can also try different uh, uh, alternative options such as speech to text and text to speech. You can also configure image generation. This is kind of one more step, but it, it, it works. It's just that it's a, a bit more uh, work to get all uh, set up than just the text-based chat, but you can also add image generation to that as well. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, and also consider subscribing to the channel so that you are notified of my future videos.